Are you ready? Yeah. Hi everyone, so today we're going to be responsible adults and I'm going to show you guys how I plan my finances. Basically what I do every month, every year and I kind of like, you know, manage my money. If you're new to me and you're wondering how I'm qualified, uh, I'm not. <laughs> This is how I do it. I would suggest you maybe try to find a system that works. You don't have to copy mine exactly, but yeah, I hope this is helpful. If you're new to this channel, you may also consider subscribing. Okay, you can check out my apartment tour. And I think there is like a part one of sorts, like me talking about how I save my money and how I choose to spend my money and stuff like that. You know how to make your own money. You need to know how to plan and manage and save it as well. And it's not that difficult, okay? Like mine is like super fucking easy and it's very fun also. So, okay, let's get started. First step, set your financial goals. We all need money, like for daily essentials, everything. So that should be part of your goal. You should be able to basically like fund yourself. And if you have children, if you have dependents, you know, you might want to account for that too. But more than that, what do you want out of life? For me, having space is very, very important, like a space to call my own. And I'm just lucky lah that we live in Singapore where it's like so bloody expensive, right? But you know, that's it. For me as well, since I work freelance, another big goal of mine is to make sure that I have like quite a hefty um, passive income or like savings so that I don't worry that I'll run out of money if I'm not earning the same amount as I do now. You might not have the same goals. You might want to save up for a gigantic wedding. You might want to save up for a gigantic like vacation. You might want to have just like a really nice like like rainy day fund, you know? You might have all of these goals and they might all seem very, very floofy and you're like, oh my god, it's just gonna cost a lot of money but like you just don't know how much. I think it helps to do a little bit of research. By giving yourself a rough estimate, you can kind of see how realistic your goals are and how you can work towards it and that is your starting point. And that brings me to step number two which is tracking your financial flow. I think this is actually the most important step and this is the step that I started out with, which is understanding where your money comes from and where it goes to. Especially for me, because I work freelance, so I have multiple streams of income, but obviously this is gonna be a lot easier if you're employed and you get a salary. So it's still helpful to kind of pen that number down and use that as a point of comparison to look at your spending and your expenses. And if you're in the habit of not really tracking what you're spending on, you tend to not remember how much you spend. Like, I can't even tell you how many times I've been shocked at my own spending at the end of the month. I'm like, oh my god, where did this money go? And then I have to check it. I'm like, oh so in my podcast Growing Pains the episode for money I think it was episode 4 I said that I use Wally, -E, which is like a money tracking app but now I use Toshol because my guest on the show Gail was like I like Toshol and you know what Toshol can sync up to your desktop it can sync up to multiple devices it's also free to use unless you want to like connect your bank accounts and track your expenses there actually the free version is better because then you build a mindful habit of writing down your expenses and sometimes you know when you use Apple Pay, it doesn't feel like anything, right? You're like, beep, and then ha ha ha, and then you'll get your food. So yeah, it's really good to catch yourself on bad habits, especially if you order like delivery a lot or grab a lot. Like it really, really helps to see the exact number that tallies up. I use Grab Pay and Shopee Pay and I just load like a few hundred dollars into it at once so that I don't have to go through like the card and like the verification and everything. So sometimes you really do lose track of how much you spend. So you could use Excel and you could do a spreadsheet. I do that for invoicing because like I said, I'm self-employed, freelance. I need to track my project-based work because at the end of the month, I do this thing called monthly accounting. Okay, you know what? Let me just look at it right now. By the way, for the app like Toshul, you can also put in your monthly income and then you can have it like balance and you can set budgets as well but for me um, because I like to have everything on an independent like spreadsheet and I like to have like literally everything so in my first column I put growth so my follower count and stuff like that and then I have productivity which will kind of detail the amount of content that I've planned delivered um, videos, pictures, that sort of thing. And then I have revenue, which is basically how much I earn my income from my different sources. 
and then I have business expenses so that I can write them off for tax purposes and also because I want to know how much I'm spending on my businesses lah. And then personal expenses where I take the stuff from Tosho. At the end of the month, I will look at my different categories and I also detail how much like I give my parents, how much I pay for insurance and taxes and investments. These are things that you might not fill in like every single month but it's good to keep track of when you do. So let's say like I pay my insurance annually, right? So I have that like big amount one time every year so I can see when I paid for it, when I'm due for the next one and how much I paid for it. And then the last column would be finances. So where I'm standing basically, the balance of all of my different bank accounts, uh, my different like investment portfolios and uh, cash if I have some lying around and then I, I do a little tally just to consolidate everything to be like okay how much money do I have. So this is something that I do. I don't know if like other people do it like that as well but for me to have everything on one single sheet I've taken my previous years and then I've like basically put them in collapsible columns and then I just minimize them when I don't need to look at them and by the way I never learned how to use Excel until I had to do this for myself for my own finances anything that you don't know how to do on Excel just google it and you'll find the answer so it's not that difficult and once you set up like I call it the master tracker like once you set up a master tracker for yourself like that it's very easy to just input and to see at an overview how much your monthly average spending is and how how much your income is it's also very therapeutic i mean sometimes it shames you but most of the time it's quite therapeutic so now that you have a good understanding of where your money comes in and out it's time for step three allocating a budget whether you use the app a notebook or a spreadsheet you'll see over a few months that actually your expenses and income don't quite vary as much as you think they do and you're able to kind of get like a nice average to set yourself um, a reasonable budget for and these are some things that you'll have to factor in loan repayments if you have study loans if you're paying off a house if you have utilities your mobile broadband bills any taxes any insurance plans like stuff that you definitely need to pay this is very exciting like bills and stuff like that some stuff that you have to pay for like transport food and beverages and you can also factor in some uh, stuff that you will definitely spend on that you shouldn't feel guilty about like fun stuff if you have a hobby that you pursue as well that you're quite into so for me it's pole I have a separate category for pole classes pole practice pole wear stuff like that that's just Pole. and if you know if you're supporting like a little baby then you can also put a little category for your pet your child your dependent and also like monthly memberships so if you have like a spotify bill if you have a gym membership stuff like that you can also factor it into your budget because you know that you'll be spending a certain amount every month every year. It's really helpful if you look at your expenses across the different months and just see how much on average you spend and then set a reasonable amount for yourself. Don't set a budget that you know you won't be able to keep to because that just you know sets you up for failure you feel like shit because you can't stick to it and then you just abandon it completely so give yourself a little bit of leeway uh for me rent is like a big amount of my expenses already so the total sum of my expenses can seem really really scary so when i want to feel like i'm being reasonable i take the rent out and I just look at my expenses otherwise so yeah my expenses are pretty high and that's why i need to track them so well because i need to know that i'm not spending crazy crazy amounts but also that if it is a higher amount, like I shouldn't feel bad because rent already accounts for so much of it. On months where you know you have to spend more, like your insurance premiums are due, stuff like that, you'll definitely have a higher expense and that will be okay. The budget is there to give you a better understanding of how much you ideally will be spending that month, right? You could go under budget, that'll be great. You could go over budget by a little bit, that's fine. And so it's important to make adjustments and to remember that it's not a fixed one and done number. So one thing you can do is actually cut back on your expenses and you can do this by looking at your expenses and determining where you might be spending too much. So are you splurging on clothes? Are you splurging on makeup? Like are you splurging on, oh my god, tech stuff? And the other thing that I've been like over budget for a lot because I didn't set a budget is pole wear. I kind of mentioned this in my poll video, like I was spending like hundreds and stuff. Last month it was 800. I'm embarrassed. I'm a little disgusted at myself, honestly. Like how can you buy laundry until it's like 800? So 
that's something that I'm gonna work towards keeping. Um, my budget for this month is zero. I did not order anything. I'm not gonna buy anything. The months moving forward, I will be holding it back. <laughs> So anywhere you feel like you're spending in excess, you can definitely tone it down and set a number for yourself to keep. Another thing you can do besides spending less money is to make more money. So this is something that a lot of people have kind of pivoted to during like circuit breaker last year and still now, you know, developing like side hustles. You could take on a second job. You can also ask for a raise or change your careers if you feel like you're underappreciated, you feel like you're at a dead end and you feel like you could be um, more fairly compensated somewhere else. Like don't ever forget to advocate for yourself. But remember, if you pick up a side hustle or if you, you know, ask for a raise and you get that raise, that extra money should not be going into your spending. You shouldn't be blowing it on like alcohol or more rides and, you know, stuff like that. That money should go into your savings and should help you kind of grow your wealth. I'm still allocating time for me to have fun. I'm still, you know, going for pole classes and they're expensive, but they make me so happy. And if I want to go to the spa one day, if I want to get my hair done, if I feel like just, you know, splurging on a cheese board, I'm going to do it because that makes me happy. It's just important not to make it a daily routine so that it's not special or fun anymore. All right, the most intimidating step, investments. At this point, I'm assuming you do have some savings, you have a better understanding of how your money comes in and out. You can also allocate a little bit of that money, especially now that you have some savings, um, to build a portfolio, like an investing portfolio. And this is something that I was like, I knew I had to do, you know, like that's passive income. That's how you keep your money working for you, right? And this is something that I feel like everyone keeps talking about. Oh my god, every finance bro is like, yo, get the investment that stocks and that bonds and shit. Okay, you know, so if you put your money in a bank, the interest loan is very, very low and it really doesn't do much for you, right? So there are actually like more low risk, more safe investment plans that you can put in to make your money grow. And if you're more adventurous, if you have spare cash and you're like, you know, I just want to make it grow faster, you can also look for portfolios that kind of fit that. So for me, right, the easiest way for me to start was to do robo investing because basically, they do it for you. You just give them the money and you're just like, thank you, bye-bye. Like, you just walk away and then you come back like a few months later and you're like, yay, my money grew. So that's what I do because I don't have a keen understanding of like bonds, stocks and equities and shit like that. And I found it intimidating, but I still wanted to start. So if you're just starting out, I recommend checking out Scythe. Scythe is a robo-investing platform online. It's regulated by MAS, the Monetary Authority of Singapore. So it's very legit, okay? They offer fully managed investment portfolios portfolios with no minimum entry or lock-in so you don't have to put in a minimum amount and you don't have to keep it in there for like a year at least that sort of thing so i find it really really cool it's very good for commitment phobes, okay? If you're feeling a little anxious, a little scared, or if you will need the money, kind of like short term, you never know when you'll need the money kind of thing, you can put it with Scythe and you can choose an investment portfolio that works for you. So if you are adventurous and you're into it, um, this is what I do. I put it in Core Growth, which will be a little bit more volatile. So the risk is slightly higher, but the gains is higher too. You know what I mean? If you want something low risk, very, very safe, then they have portfolios that are suitable for that as well. That's called core defensive. And if you want something in the middle, then you got yourself core balanced. So yeah, you can find something that will suit you based on your needs, um, your goals, and your risk assessment, whether you are feeling like it or not. They have like a questionnaire. I have a couple of like balanced and like protective ones already, and I was like, you know, why not? You literally put the money in, and you don't even have to look at it, you know? You can come back a few months later, and then you'll be like, oh wow, like that's... That's much more. So I think within a month, um, I started off with 10k just to put it in and I like 10k because it's like a nice number. You can see exactly how much you're making in a month. And I think it was like 300, like it's, it's quite fast, you know. And then um, it went up and it went down again. So I think it's still at around 300 plus now that it's been two months. But I was really impressed because that was like pretty fast. So you can do it like me. You can just put a lump sum and then, you know, wait for it to go up and down. Or you can also put in extra payments every month, like gyro payments, especially if you're like a salaried employee and you can set aside that budget quite comfortably. If not, you can also just put it in whenever you have extra you know, so I just put in like an extra 1k for fun. So we'll see 
how it goes and how it helps. If you want to check out Scythe, I'll leave it in the description bar. You can sign up there. And this is our final step. Keep track. All of this financial planning that you did right isn't a one and done system. You don't just do it one time and you're like, yeah, I'm done, good job me. You'll definitely need to keep tabs on your personal finances and check in with yourself, you know, ask yourself, after several months, like, hey, have my goals changed? What are your current needs? What does your lifestyle look like? Does your budget need to be adjusted? How are your investments performing? So that's what I like to do. I like to check in every single month to see how much it's growing. And at the bare minimum, know what your finances look like. Even if it doesn't look great, at least you know. And from there, you can make your plans for life like so much easier and so much more realistically. So that is all I have to offer. I hope this was helpful. This is something that I also practice as well. And if you have more helpful tips that I didn't bring up, like maybe you can share them with me as well. I'm sure that I'll learn a lot from it. And if you want to know anything else, if you have any more questions, then feel free to leave them down below. Don't forget to also check out Scythe if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Up, and also subscribe to my channel. I make new videos every week so I'll be back next week and turn on your notifications so you get my videos hot off the press and I'll see you guys really soon. He's just sleeping there the whole time being such a good boy. I love you baby. Yeah. Alright, bye guys. <laughs>